It's a delicious last course. Oh, the delicious last course. One can eat their fill and still stay until the delicious last course. It's a delicious last course. Oh, that delicious last course. The shark cakes and pies and dozen stones, oh my, for that delicious last course. Oh, Miss Child. 2017, we got this game called Cuphead. It was highly anticipated. It brings back the golden age of American animation from the 1930s aesthetic and the jazz age. The soundtrack is amazing, fully fleshed out for each of the bosses, and the animation is just, mm, it is amazing. But there is something different about this game. This game is difficult. Coming from the 2D kind of Soulsborne game from playing Salt and Sanctuary to Salt and Sacrifice, Cuphead had a different kind of style. It had the run and gun shooter style, where you have a gauntlet of bosses and at your face with some running guns sprinkled in between. But really what made this game special were the bosses. It was they were difficult, different kinds of style when you're in a plane versus when you're on the ground, and you have these different abilities that you can use. It was a hit. I absolutely loved Cuphead. I think it is one of the best games that is out and one of the best games that ever came out in 2017. And everybody needs to go play this. I know it's a difficult game, but it's a lot of fun. In 2022, we get to step back into the world of Cuphead with the delicious Last Course, the DLC that dropped on Xbox and on Windows. This, com this introduces a new character named Legendary Chalice, a whole different kind of gameplay, all new bosses and the art style is dialed up to 11. Seeing them come from where they started with Cuphead, don't deal with the devil, to where they are now with the delicious last course, it is mind boggling. They take their time. It took five years to get this DLC, but you can see where the love was put in, where the hard work was put in. And honestly, not doing the whole crunch thing and trying to get this out with your own time and not worrying about deadlines or anything like that, you got to give them props for that. You got to give them props. This is probably the best $8 you're going to spend on a video game if you already own Cuphead. I'm going to dive deep into the mechanics of the Delicious Last Course, and I'm going to talk about some of the bosses. The Delicious Last Course, in my opinion, can run for Game of the Year for 2022. When a new DLC drops for a game, you have to bring something that will put a fresh coat of paint on an older game. So, in this case, it's Miss Chalice. She comes with a plethora of new ways to play the game, and you can also play her on previous levels, which is awesome. She comes in with her own kind of like iframe dodge that she kind of has on the ground. She comes with an innate double jump, and her parry is built into her dodge, which was, I have to admit, it, I had to bend my brain a little bit, and it kind of broke my brain for the first little while to play her. But honestly, I don't really see myself going back to Mugman or Cuphead now because Miss Chalice is so good. She also comes with an extra hit point. And playing her with the new levels, because I played it with Cuphead and Miss Chalice now, Miss Chalice is far more superior and is just so much more fun to play when it comes to the new levels and even the older levels as well. Something else that comes into play with this DLC is this thing called the King's Leap. So in the first combat, they had the running guns. I did not enjoy the running guns. I don't think they were implemented correctly. I don't think they, they kind of throw off the vibe of the game a little bit. And I think they weren't implemented the best way. They're just a way to get three coins, honestly. And going from amazing boss battles to running guns, it just didn't feel right. In this DLC, they added the King's Leap, which is pretty much challenge rooms for Miss Chalice. They're just challenge rooms to get you to her playstyle, to make her playstyle feel good. And going from uh, different ways of like the pawns where you have to parry slap them every time they come down to say the the rook where you need to slap the head the pink heads back towards the rook while you're still dodging it just makes it feel so much it just makes her feel so much better and i think they nailed it with those and i'm hoping if a new game does come out for cuphead they go this method and not towards the running guns before i get to the the bosses themselves i just want to shout out to the animation I did a comparison uh, for when Cuphead first came out in 2017. And looking at the levels, 
looking at the bosses and stuff like that, there's not much happening when it comes to like the background, the main boss is pretty much where the main animation comes in. The side stuff is not too much animated, but it's not that bad. Again, it's still impressive for the time. But when you look at the DLC, when you look at the bosses, the animation is turned to 11. You see the verticality and how much animation is, not even with the le with the boss themselves, but the stuff around. And you see the different ways that they've kind of excelled with this animation. The boss fights feel more alive while you're in them. There is a boss fight that I'm not the biggest fan of when it comes to like how, it, how they present the animation, but how it transitions from phase to phase is just amazing. It's amazing. So props to the team. Whatever they had for the base game for Cuphead, they brought with this DLC more and more and more. It just brought into this new level of development that I think that outdid themselves. And I'm excited to see what this development team does next. I, I love their 1930s uh, art style, and I kind of hope they keep going with this because I, it is a product that nobody is making right now. So the more they lean into it, I think the better it is going to be for them and the meat and potatoes of Cuphead are the bosses. They dropped six bosses in the DLC. Six normal bosses, one secret boss. So about seven bosses. And then with the Leap's King, they dropped another five challenge challenges. So, but we're going to the bosses, they are high quality bosses. Going from Gnome Way Out, where you have the snow area, and it just the transitions from one resident to another is done so 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 well with the bootleg boogie coming in and bringing old kind of characters back into the fold which you played with when you were playing the base game and bringing in brand new fresh characters which was amazing to see bringing back a flying uh, level again which is great because i really enjoy the the airplane ones because i think that you can do a little bit more with that because it's just kind of a side scroller in in that sense uh not all bosses hit but Honestly, in my opinion, these are really, really high quality bosses. Uh, even going into the final boss, when you go into a dish to die for the salt baker, that fight was so well crafted. The, the way the transitions happen from going from the table to his hand, it's just, they, they just did such a good job with that. And then adding the secret boss, one hell of a dream. The gimmick of it is very interesting with the angel and the devil. Bringing back the devil was a really nice touch, and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was I thought it was awesome. With these bosses, with this DLC comes brand new weapons. Some of them are pretty OP, not gonna lie, but they all come with like their new kind of techniques. And then with Miss Chalice bringing a more of a vertical AOE. This is a lot where M Studio MDHR's animation comes into play with their transitions from from one phase to another. Gnome Way Out had amazing transition going from outside into the mouth of the gnome. When you go into a dog one dog fight, you go from fighting the pilot to fighting lasers and the screen moves and the animation completely changes and transitions to this whole different kind of fight. It is great. Snow Cult Scuffle going from the first phase to the next one uh, to the last phase you have a verticality to it so you have to jump up and then the whole fight changes completely which is great 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 to see i think that studio mjhr outdid themselves with this dlc with the bosses and with the new kind of abilities that everybody has the delicious last chorus by studio mjhr is one of the best releases of this year if you have the base game it's the best eight dollars you could spend coming in with seven new bosses and five challenge runs it really builds on what the legacy that cuphead had went in 2017 getting rid of the running guns and adding the challenge runs is an amazing idea being able to play cuphead mugman or miss chalice in the delicious last course or even the entire game is a great addition miss chalice is an awesome addition to the cast and her new abilities and her new ways of playing the game really do put a fresh take on the cuphead formula i would give this game a solid 9 out of 10. i it was hard for me to wrap my brain around playing this again because it's been a long time since i played it but honestly it is a great game with great bosses great animation and i have to send kudos to studio mdhr for this game thank you guys so much for watching the video if you guys like the video please hit the like button if you guys like this kind of content sub to the channel there's gonna be some more reviews coming out 
all that kind of jazz. If you want to support the channel directly, you can go to patreon.com slash beard and the hair. Even with $1, you can help keep the lights on, keep these reviews coming. Thank you guys so much. I stream over on twitch.tv slash beard and the hair five days a week. We talk Cuphead. We talk all sorts of Soulsborne, all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions about Cuphead, come on over. We have an amazing community there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.